Education and Health Sciences. Uh, along with me, we also have our uh, Associate Dean, um, Dr. Um, Patty Emmons. Uh, we also have our excellent faculty, uh, Dr. Magnuson from the Department of Counselor Education. Um, so I will we'll get started. Go ahead, Patty. Thank you um, both for attending this evening. <laughs> um, we're really excited about this series. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm so glad you put your camera on. <laughs> April, she's been coming to a couple of our sessions. So um, I'll just I'll introduce Dr. Meganson. She's a licensed school counselor and a licensed mental health counselor in Massachusetts. She spent 14 years working in diverse public schools as a Title I guided reading specialist, high school counselor and middle school counselor. She provides health counseling at Elevate Counseling in Easton. She's a professor in the counselor, counselor education department at BSU. Her scholarship interests that she's presented at state, regional, national, and international conferences. Oh my gosh. You have so much. <laughs> I know. That's fine. There's so <laughs> well, hang on. Um, assisting school counselors in implementing a comprehensive data-driven school counseling program, advocating for the LGBTQIA population, as well as utilizing play therapy and expressive art therapy. So she has an impressive resume. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome Dr. Meganson. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad that you guys could make it today. We're going to be talking about um, putting on our oxygen masks and finding ways to take care of ourselves um, as caretakers, teachers, educators. Why don't you guys tell me, we're such a small group, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about yourself and what brought you to um, our session today? Hi, um, I found out about this through Adoption Journeys. It was a support group. Um, someone else who's in the support group um, has taken some of the um, webinars through here. So that's who suggested it. I am a middle school teacher in Worcester and I have a 15 year old going on 50, going on five, um, who's a freshman in high school. Awesome. So I actually have a five year old, a 13 year old and a 16 year old. So. I figured all this stuff um, that we'll have a lot to connect on. Um, it looks like you're a parent and um, interesting. So we might have a lot to talk about. So let's talk a little bit about um, putting on our oxygen mask. So you guys can all see the screen, I'm guessing, or thumbs up with that, great. So um, if you've ever traveled, um, you've been through the spiel where the flight attendant talks about how you need to um, make sure to put on your own mask, oxygen mask before you put on your children's that are sitting next to you, right? And so sometimes that feeling is a little bit like, oh no, but my kids, I should put them first. I should um, take care of them first. And so sometimes it's hard to really think about, well, if I'm not, if I'm not able to take care of myself, then how are my kids going to take care of themselves? And I am a role model for them. So this is, um, it's going to be just as important for us to, you know, put that mask on and then put it on for them. Um, so what is well-being? Um, it's been defined as a lot of different April, things. I'm sorry, are you sharing your screen? Oh, I am, but you guys aren't seeing yeah, it. We're not seeing it. Well, is anybody else seeing it? I think you have permission. Let's see. Now we got it. Can okay. everybody else see it? See it. So look, we'll go back backwards in time and look at the fun picture of putting on the oxygen mask, right? 
So what is well-being? So well-being kind of can be defined in a lot of different ways, um, but really it's just the ability to kind of take care of yourself um, and feel good about yourself and feel good about where you're at and what's happening. Um, what are some ways that you have defined um, your own well-being or what, how have you defined well-being? Well, it's going to be interactive, guys. You guys are going to have to unmute. I know this is kind of scary. Or put in the chat. I think for during COVID, that's been really, really hard. I adopted my daughter on my own. My parents lived two hours away. Um, and with my worried about my health and my friends worried about their health, you know, there's there's no having a break. There's no doing any of that stuff. Um, and my daughter just started remote about a month ago. I mean, not remote, started um, hybrid about a month ago. Um, so I get three hours in the morning, but I'm teaching. So, you know, it, it's not much of a difference. So it's really hard to do nowadays. Oh, I think, um, yeah. Before I agree. you be trying to spend time with friends um, and sometimes with friends with her, you know, it didn't have to be without my daughter, but trying to, to have that downtime. I'm a workaholic um, and the daughter's very busy. So quite often the me time was the hour when she went to bed before I went to bed. And it's not the best. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to share? Well, I could share. I, I have three, you know, I have a, uh, one year, five, and the nine. Um, you know, when the nine o'clock kicks in, I am computer. My two other ones are on the computers. Five and nine on the computer. Um, they're all both doing the um, hundred percent uh, remote learning. Um, but then I had to try to put my one year to sleep um, because my wife had to serve as a kindergarten teacher for for my five years old. Um, otherwise, he just sits in front of the computer, doesn't know what he's doing. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, uh, you know, my, you'll hear the background baby crying or something comes up because then I got to get to my meeting too. So what's high is you just got to drop in and say, sorry, got to go. Yep. Yes, thank you for sharing. Di, Patty, do you guys want to share? It's okay if you don't. I was trying to unmute my audio and I couldn't. Well-being has totally changed in the time of COVID. <laughs> it, you know, it, the definition has completely changed. Um, and I don't have children that are home, mine are gone. So it's just my husband and I, and I think well-being is trying to find a balance between work and personal life. I feel like they both just kind of merge together. So what I try to do is at the end of the day, I try to put my computer to sleep. And then I close my door, <laughs> my office door, and I try not to come back till the next morning. But meanwhile, I'm on my phone. <laughs> so I guess I have a, a hard time with what well-being is. I think it's so important, uh, some of the things that you've mentioned about, I mean, my commute is like down the hallway, right? So while that can be nice, it's also always available. Um, and so it is hard to um, turn it off and go to the next thing. Um, and making sure that there is really a split between home and work and personal life and professional life. That's why I feel badly that I don't have small children. <laughs> They're always there. One of the things that um, Beth reminded me of, I was just thinking about it, just, you know, it was almost a year ago, we were getting ready for Bridgewater's spring break and for Bridgewater we have a spring break that's not really coordinated with local schools so my kids I was really looking forward to having a week to myself at home 
<laughs> and um, I think it was like Thursday before the break, my husband got a call saying, oh, his school was canceled till April. And then my kids soon after, and I never, they never left. I'm still here with them. <sighs> so I'm a little bit like, my husband goes back to work next week. Um, and then the big kids go every couple of days, but it's gonna be interesting. Um, so thank you. So um, there are a lot of different thoughts about what wellness is um, and there's different ways to assess your wellness. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the six dimensions of wellness, um, which include occupational, physical, social, intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. So what I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to need to get a piece of paper if you can, and a pen, or maybe you just get your phone with your calculator because you're gonna take an assessment. We're gonna take a quick little test, but there's no failing this test. So don't worry about that part. There's no right answers. Um, so I'm gonna head to the next section. So this is occupational wellness and you're gonna give yourself four, three, two, or one point for each of the different um, areas. So like the first um, statement is, I get personal satisfaction from my job. If you usually do, then that's gonna give you, you're gonna give yourself four points. If, um, if you sometimes do, rare, it would be three points, rarely two and never one. So you're gonna kind of add up your totals. So I believe that I'm able to contribute my knowledge, skills and talents at work. I seek opportunities to improve my knowledge or skills. I have a good balance of work and leisure. I develop good work habits and job related skills. I set career goals for myself. I explore career and or volunteer opportunities that interest me. Okay, so then you're gonna total those scores and that's gonna be your occupational wellness. Now you don't have to share this, okay. Now we're gonna to go to the next. So then this is physical wellness. Again, usually four points, sometimes three, rarely two, never one. I engage in exercise regularly. I get six to eight hours of sleep each night. I see my doctor regularly. I feel comfortable with my body. I am responsible with alcohol, cigarettes, and other, and other substances. I eat a balanced diet. I have developed healthy habits. Okay, so now you're gonna add up all those for your physical wellness. Give me Can a thumbs up when you're done. Say that again. Can we use the calculator? Yes, use a calculator. No, I teach the math map. I used to teach the math methods courses. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> you would ask someone to add up their score, use calculator. This is not like playing golf. Golf, you put something you need a calculator if you hit lots of strokes. <laughs> Okay, we're moving forward. Ready? Okay. So next is social wellness, which I am sure has really hit uh, uh, um, or at least changed. So remember, usually is four, sometimes three, rarely two, never one. I have a strong support network 
family. Oh, we don't want fiends. We would like friends. Sorry, that's a typo. Hmm. Um, coworkers and or peers. I am able to develop positive relationships. I have good communication skills. I am able to reach out to others for support when needed. I am able to draw boundaries with myself and others. I am aware of my impact in my community. I focus on maintaining social connections by keeping in touch and staying connected with others. Okay, now get out that calculator, add them all up. Okay, ready to move on to the next? We're halfway through the dimensions. Okay. So intellectual wellness. Um, again, usually four points, sometimes three, rarely two, never one. I utilize my creative abilities. I consider myself a lifelong learner. I engage in books, articles, or podcasts that interest me. I'm able to develop, analyze, problem solve, and more. I enjoy challenging myself mentally. Um, so like challenging puzzles, learning a new language, learning a new instrument. I explore public slash community events. I exercise critical thinking skills. I'm gonna add them up. Okay, looks like everybody's done. We're gonna move on. Spiritual wellness, usually four, sometimes three, rarely two, never one. I feel connected to something larger than myself. I feel like my life has purpose and meaning. I take time to think about what's important in life. I participate in religious or otherwise spiritual activities and practices. My values are priorities in my life and are reflected in my actions. I engage in acts of caring and goodwill. I have found a balance between meeting my needs and those of others. Okay, add them up. Okay, we're moving on to the last section. So emotional wellness. <clears throat> I 
Um, I have healthy relationships. Somebody is just texting me that they can't find the link for tonight's event. Um, I am able to express my feelings to those that I trust. I am resilient. I am working on things I want to improve about myself. I'm aware of my feelings. I am able to ask for help. And I have a positive self image. Oops. Now we're gonna add those up and we're done. Well, with this part, we're done with the math. We can put our calculators away. Patty, do you know what our passcode is for this event? Let me check. I'm trying to figure out how many screens I have to go through. Okay. I know. I, it's like it, mine's not open. It is 851-498. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this before we get into how we can increase our well-being. But what was that like for you? What did what what were you thinking were you surprised by your results you don't have to share but um were you surprised by your results what did you let's start with what did you guys think about these six different areas hey karen you're just gonna have to kind of hang out with us for a bit but i'll catch you up in a second no worries thank you For me, some were easier than others <clears throat> to either admit to or acknowledge. Um, the emotional was hard. Um, and I'm not, I'm overweight and out of shape. So the physical was sort of like a, uh, but it's the truth. So that's what I told. It could be hard to answer some of these questions about ourselves. Something that was interesting to me is I find myself as a social person and that was the lowest right now. And you had said something about, you know, during times of COVID and maybe I'm just kind of feeling that. But right. So normally yeah. that's probably a full area for you, but right now it's kind of shrunk a bit and it's hard to kind of figure out how to navigate and make adjustments. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna kind of come up with some ideas of ways that we can increase our well being in these different areas. So um, this is just kind of a, a picture again of, of the six dimensions of wellness. Um, 
Yes. So I think Karen. Um, Karen, I just sent you the PowerPoint so you can kind of look back so you can see what we've done. That might be helpful for you. So let's talk about occupational. I'm gonna, um, I'm hoping that we can come up with some ideas. What things can we do? Can we add to our life to add in that section? Did somebody have that one? Was that one pretty high for anybody? The occupational, feeling good about your job, um, feeling like you have the skills necessary to do it. I imagine as an educator right now, this job feels a lot more than what we originally signed up for, right? Because I'm learning so much more about technology than um, I ever thought, especially even as a counselor, because a counselor is very people or like, focused on the body language and how we're going to do this and how we work together in counseling and now we're approaching it from a different way yeah it is very different and very hard um occupation is something that i normally do good in but it's very interesting i'm not a goal setter um for work per se <clears throat> excuse me i'm a workaholic um, I work hard. I do really well. I'm the team leader. I'm the middle school chair. I'm the department head. I'm the, so, you know, it's always just doing stuff, but I've never set a goal of, okay, in one year I will have this or do this. I don't do that. I just go out and do stuff. So it was very funny on that was my low one. I had a one on that one because it's just not something I do. Okay. Uh, but I'm successful at what I do. <laughs> so it's, you know, Right. According to, state and according to people who have nominated me in the awards I've won. Um, but it is sort of funny of that's not something I do, but that's something I need to do in my personal life. So you think that goal setting would be helpful, maybe not just in the occupational realm, but more in your personal life? It definitely would be. I need to get doing the exercise and eating better and stuff like that. I'm always a work in progress. I'm always starting over again. I keep trying. Well, aren't we all kind of work in progresses? Oh my gosh. That's how I would. Karen, so the occupational world, did you, were you able to kind of check that out a little bit? Um, I tried. Yes, I'm on my phone. So I'm having a hard time with, um, I don't know, <laughs> going back and forth. So I'm struggling with that a little bit. But um, I'm getting the gist of it. Like, basically, you know, how we can feel success in our occupational world versus our personal and, and how we're taking care of, of us, right? Am, am, am I understanding that kind of so up to speed? So basically I'm, I'm using this dimensions of wellness idea that there are six dimensions. So we're not just like where our well-being comes from is, is um, in multiple different areas. So one of them being occupational wellness. Um, and that's really all about kind of having a career that you're passionate about. Um, and sometimes that's, that's feasible and that's happening. Sometimes that's not, especially in this COVID world that we live in, right? Um, but it could also be about learning new skills, um, being interested in um, things, looking for opportunities to grow, which um, I heard, um, is it die? Am I saying, okay. Um, so that um, could be something that we we're kind of looking for right now um, is this ability to, to grow during this time occupationally and find ways to, um, to build up our personal interests and values so that they can align. And that makes sense, yeah. So I would say, you know, I had to take a, a job out of, out of grad school um, that fit 
my current needs due to the pandemic. And it's not, it's not what I want to be doing, but um, it fits, you know, my daughter's homeschooling. So it's, it's, it just fits right now, but it's not what I want. So looking for those opportunities to grow, I'm exploring ways that I can still work towards the job that I really want in the meantime. So it's kind of keeping my mental health piece okay because I did work so hard on getting my grad degree that I really want to be doing what I want to be doing but um unfortunately the pandemic is just not allowing for that right now so um we're seeing the light though we're seeing the light so <laughs> yes I see that looking for opportunities to grow and and I you know I got stuck in a rut a little bit but I did start I'm it's nice that you're saying that because it's making me realize yeah I guess that's what I did because I just got like almost almost in a depressed state because I was just not like I felt like I did all that for nothing but just to kind of you know give myself a reality slap and 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 pull myself up by my bootstraps and just kind of like what can I do to make it work and and still feel like I can move forward and and reach that goal eventually so um yeah I hear that and um you know, I, where were you a week ago, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, how we feel about our job really does kind of connect with our whole life. Like it impacts our, like if we don't love our job or if we don't even like it, life can be kind of unbearable. But at the same time, we need to pay bills. So sometimes we have to kind of juggle um, our, our values and, and what we're looking for. Um, so some of the different things that um, were kind of discussed, um, sometimes it means knowing that something is temporary um, when it comes to work and that you'll get there eventually. I think that's a good way of putting it, Karen, knowing that um that you're doing what it takes right now and you're having the kind of job that's going to provide you with whatever resources you need i'm going to guess flexibility um in being a parent um that's just a guess so let's talk about emotional so emotional well wellness is this um idea um that um we need to kind of be able to recognize and accept our feelings, um, bad and good, and being able to um, kind of feel positive and enthusiastic about life. And so, um, so sometimes when we feel, um, so hopefully some of the things that will be, or that you could work on is kind of being able to name your feelings, um, uh, um, have satisfying relationships um, with others, which is also kind of social. So see how they kind of mix together. Um, um, manage your feelings. So sometimes we need help doing this stuff. And sometimes it's not easy. Um, and so um, you guys are here today. So thank you so much. We're working on stuff. So let's go to the next two. Can I just make a comment about the emotional? Yes. What's really interesting with the busyness of our society, all of a sudden, a year ago yesterday, everything shut down. So I think a lot of these things that you're talking about are things that we have within us that people have just been too busy to even think about. And now we've been kind of thrown into this situation that all of this stuff is just a lot. So I, I really like the way you're separating it. Well, and it's, I mean, it's hard to think about like, oh, am I well? Am I, do I have good well-being? Am I practicing mm -hmm. self-care? Like sometimes those concepts are so big, it's hard to 
okay, well, I got my hair cut today. So I guess that's a little bit like wellness, like I'm taking care of myself. But like, what does that really mean? Like, um, so I, I do like the way that um, this is kind of looking at it and piecing it out, but then also understanding it's really part of a big whole, I mean, part of a whole as well. Okay, so that didn't work. Ah, ah, as far as my, um, oh my gosh. Um, so how are you guys feeling? I, I will be 100% honest with you. Um, I am not doing so well in the physical domain. The fact that the kitchen is always open and just a few feet away is problematic for me. And I never even realized how much I was walking um, to work every, you know, I mean, like, um, how much I was walking just even from my off, like to my office or just around until I'm not doing that anymore. Um, I heard somebody the other day talk about the COVID-15, like the freshman 15, um, because we are, and even being, being out is kind of difficult. So now we have to really rethink it. And then in the weather, the weather hasn't helped in the last couple of months. It's been a little bit warmer and I keep hearing that it's gonna be really nice and warm next week, which I'm excited about. But um, I think definitely for me, the physical, um, my physical dimension has totally taken a nosedive um, during COVID. So one of the things that we've started practicing in our house is that we have prepackaged snacks and it's almost like Disney, you get two snack credits a day in our house. And so like, just kind of, because otherwise we'll just eat and eat and eat and not really, we're eating out of boredom and not eating because we need sustenance. So just kind of coming up with, that was one of our um, interesting ways of dealing with the revolving. I mean, I felt like the kids were in the kitchen all the time it's gotten a little bit better but it's just like what are we going to eat now we just ate lunch half an hour ago there's no more food i don't want to go get it it's kind of scary and i don't want to make any more like you no, stop eating um so um did have you guys kind of found some similar stuff what have you guys done some stuff that's found some ways to get out that have been physical? Have you guys found some ways that have made it work for you? I have yeah. done thinking about it. Um, Megan, let's go out and walk today. And then after work, both of us are like, uh, or I shouldn't say work, school for both of us. It's just like, okay, sit, you know, it's awful because it's sitting in front of another screen. It's the TV screen, but um, it's so draining to do that part of it. Um, food, we've been a little bit better at. We did do a lot more baking and cooking in the fall, so I'm getting tired of that now. Um, but it was with my daughter, especially a little bit me, but more my daughter, the, you know, constantly, okay, so I can't buy cookies on sale. I can only buy one box of cookies and that's all you get for the week. I can't, you know, two for, you know, six bucks. So I buy four of them because it's a good price and nope, because the four of them will be gone in the week. Um, so that part's hard and trying to make sure there's more fruit in the house, um, but she'll go for chocolate any day over anything else. So it doesn't work too well. And that's the number one place where I need to work at is the physical wellness. Yeah, we got a treadmill. It's in the basement. We took out the we, um, we have we fit and and um, I my kids are way better at it than I am. Um, so it's <laughs> it's just not. I, I just I prefer to go out and walk, but it's just been the weather has been not cooperating. Although it's like you said, it's getting better. So I'm hopeful that I can start booting myself in the butt to do that. But um. Yeah, when I, I live in a very active neighborhood, so I'm watching all these people out there walking when it's 30 degrees and I'm like, no, <laughs> not interested in that. So um, 
but it does make a difference. It makes you feel so much better when you, when you walk or when you go and you're active. And like you said, you don't realize how much walking you do when you're out and about rather than just sitting at home in the office. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, that's definitely got to be something that is, is my number one right now priority of trying to get back into and spring makes it a little easier. So <laughs> yes, I'm hopeful too. I think, um, I think something that was kind of a little bit affirming for me was the, like, are you sleeping enough? Are you, do you go to the doctor regularly? Are you making health a priority? And so I might not do really well on the exercise part, but some of that other stuff I do have down. So that made me really, cause I'll, you know, I don't know. Sometimes when I think of physical wellness, I like focus on the exercising part and the mm-hmm. loving your body and, you know, loving where you're at. And so I'm doing some good stuff, like giving myself credit for where I'm at. Um, or we should all be giving ourselves credit for where we're at. Okay, now Patty said that the social area was the part that she was kind of um, struggling with during COVID. What are some ways that you've been able to find yourself being social, um, maybe in different ways than, than previous? We do a lot of video chats. So I've connected with my my um, college friends. I've connected, and once a month I connect with my college roommates and I connect with my friends from my old, you know, used to be in a church folk group. So that gang that used to hang out together, we're now virtual and we haven't really paid attention to each other for like 15 years because all our kids are different ages. So we haven't had as much in common. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, I've actually, I'm a kind of an, I'm rather introverted. So this Zoom thing is exhausting, but I think it's good. And I think it's good for me. And I think it, you know, I've forced myself to do this social stuff, <laughs> like, like a webinar, <laughs> way out of my comfort zone. And look, you're like one of six here. So I'm making you talk. And I was going to say, I think you've been at all of our webinars, haven't you? Yeah, I'm making myself do it. It's good for me. Yes. Good for you. Well, good. Okay, I'm writing a whole bunch of stuff down. So video chats, I definitely feel like I am more connect. Like I had to teach my mom how to do some stuff um, online, but like my, I, um, I think, I, I think you mentioned it, maybe Beth did too. Like my family is not close by. So it has been that, like my family is in Arizona and California. So it's been very isolating for like, it's just the five of us all the time, all day long. Um, so, you know, finding ways to connect with people um, through video chat or um, been doing a lot of um, games um, at home. So we've d- we now have a game night um, that's pretty active. And then um, we've been trying to get other people and doing it virtually. So having other people come join our game. So that could be some good stuff too. Okay. We, we do that also. Do that again? We, wait, the game nights, we do that too, virtually and in just the three of us. It's fun. Like I feel there, I feel like even though this has been a really kind of challenging experience, there are some good things that came out of it, at least for my family. And if I can focus on that, then sometimes the scary stuff doesn't impact me as much. Okay. Now we're gonna go to the next, the last slides. I hope. So intellectual and spiritual. So what were some, so remember intellectual is kind of, well, that's kind of what we were just talking about, playing games. Um, so if we're playing more of those like card games, um, we've taught our kids games that they did not even know before. Um, 
So kind of using our puzzle skills, our creative skills, um, kind of reading more, doing some podcasts, like what are some ways that you guys have been able to integrate kind of that intellectual wellness in your life during this time? Um, well, I'm coming off of a master's degree that I didn't finish until August, so um, I kind of needed a brain break after that. <laughs> right. Um, so, but now I'm finding I've school has been literally just part of my life for because I went part time for so long, just all along. So after a couple of months of a brain break, I kind of started missing it, and so I started seeking out these webinars and seeking out um, um, just ways to, to feel like I'm still gaining knowledge in some fields or in, in the way, in my end goal of, of my employment um, and where I wanna be with my career. So, um, and, it's, and it's connected me in ways that I didn't even expect. Like when I was looking for webinars and I found you April, it was like, oh, it's April. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so definitely making sure that I'm keeping my brain not turning to mush is important for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. What As about a spiritually? I mean, a lot of churches are closed, so then there can feel like there's a disconnect. Um, but spirituality isn't all about religion. Beth, it looks like you have some. Yeah, I was just adding into the intellectual. For, as a teacher, the learning has been 5,000 fold this year with all the new programs and stuff. But I've also enjoyed part of it. And um, a webinar is like simple K, K-12 um, that, that does free half hour ones have been a lot of fun to learn about emojis, not emojis. Um, emojis. Uh, yeah, um, and Nearpod and a lot of that stuff. So I've been doing a lot of that that normally I wouldn't do because it's all online. So it's like this. It's really easy to do it where, because I'm home and it's okay that I leave my daughters upstairs for, you know, for right now. Spiritually, um, my church is online. This fall when they had it outside, we have a big, big yard. So that, you know, we were 12 feet apart from people and had our masks on. I did do a couple of those outside, but it's okay, Megan, you know, it's 950. Let's turn on YouTube and go find church. And I will admit that we're not perfect. Um, we usually do sing with them, but we're not doing everything else um, because sometimes the computers are on and stuff like that. So we're not totally focused. But um, I also go to bed every night thanking God for the fact that and in the morning waking up, you know, that I am alive, I am here, that Megan's alive, my parents are, because so many people don't have that. Loved ones are dying um, normally, never mind COVID wise. Um, so I think that's important. Um, I have a couple of times gone through and read the Bible a little bit, um, but more just that connection of thank you, God, and trying to do a little bit of mindfulness part of it of just focusing on what's the good parts and thank you for that. Yeah, I also go to an online church uh, and been doing that the whole time. Yeah, our church is still online and no, not in person. Although some people, they stream things from, <laughs> from, from the church sometimes, but all of us are at home and uh, yeah, I'm also singing in the choir, and so I get to give back um, by, quote, leading the hymns, which means I sing them for everybody, and um, which is great because it's, I miss the singing with people. We're, you know, so we're connecting with, I'm also connecting with my choir members. We're recording ourselves on Soundtrap and doing little, you know, recordings for the church services every once in a while quite interesting but at least we're not singing together but we can hear our voices together so yeah. it's nice I like that it's interesting Beth when you talked about the whole idea of being grateful and thankful for 
what we have now. I got my first COVID shot on Monday and I was so apprehensive, I nervous. And after the girl gave it to me, she was like, congratulations, you're lucky. And I, that just like, wow. Uh, you know, it made me think of all the people that didn't have the chance to get it. And that that was a uh, pretty, in, it, the way that it impacted me was, yeah. Yeah, I didn't expect it. I've heard some people say it's a big weight off their shoulders that they didn't even realize was there until they got the shot. It was just this feeling of, maybe there's this feeling of, oh, it's almost over or feeling a little safer, but whatever it is that that weight is kind of being lifted a little bit. It definitely helps with the anxiety for sure. I got my second one today. So um, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, I'm planning for tomorrow to be a down day, but um, <laughs> I'm feeling very thankful that, um, you know, there's hope for, for something, some sort of normalcy to, to be coming soon. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So how do we teach our kids about well-being, right? Because here we are, we put our own oxygen mask on, we're talking about ways that we can increase um, our own dimensions of wellness, but how do we teach our kids about it? How do we put that oxygen mask on them? Um, and I would argue that we do that by modeling, right? You know, um, gosh, um, there's some famous quote and I'm sure I'm wrecking it, but it's something about like, um, what you're doing is so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. And I know there's, you know, there's that saying, um, do what I say, not what I do. But what you're doing is so loud, I can't hear you. Um, and so I think one of the best ways that we can help our kids achieve wellness is by achieving it for ourselves, knowing that it's a destiny, it's not a destination, it's a journey, right? So it's, it's not a place that we get to, it's something that we're always striving to, um, to, to reach. And so letting kids know this kind of breaks it down a little bit more about those different areas. So in that physical, eat well, get enough sleep, be active, take smart risks. In the spiritual, live your values, find meaning, celebrate your culture, practice your faith. Emotional, be self-aware, express feelings constructively, show empathy and compassion, have a positive attitude. Um, intellectually, be curious, learn by watching, listening, and doing, stick with school and master new skills. Um, and then um, occupationally, for them, it's all about playing, finding their passion, sharing in family chores, and volunteering. And then that social is all the way around. So spend time with family, be a good friend, um, give back to your community and look out for others. So we can, you know, we can do some of this and we can share it with our kids. And that way we're putting on our own oxygen mask before we put it on them. And that's pretty much all I have for tonight. Do you guys have any questions? I really appreciated this. It was so fun to just get to know everybody and kind of really talk about some of our experiences during COVID. I really appreciate you guys being vulnerable and open and talking about some of this stuff. It can be hard. So um, the resources, I got this from the National Wellness um, Institute. So the, there's a whole bunch of um, free resources there if you ever wanted to kind of look more. There's like a more thorough test of each um, dimension if you wanted to take that. Um, 
Are these slides going to be sent out to participants? I don't know. Patty, how are we doing that? Yes, um, the session was recorded. Well, last week we recorded it, but we're still trying to find it. <laughs> so hopefully this will be posted on our website. Um, and if you're willing to share your slides, April, we can put your PowerPoint presentation up. Okay. So that people can just click on the link and yeah. access it that way. So it'll I'll be on the same website that you registered. Okay. The, Should yes. I email it to Tracy? That would be perfect. Okay. I'll email out a PDF so you guys can have it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. This was really helpful. I'm sorry I came in late. I, I feel like I I jumped in, but I, I appreciate it. It was helpful. I appreciate, you know, I appreciate you jumping in and I enjoyed meeting each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a great evening. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy Thank St. You Patrick's much. Day to you too. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much, April. Much. That was great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Have Thank a good night. So Thank you. Take care. Off to dropkick Murphy's. Thank you, April. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. That was fun. Thanks so much. You that guys was great, day. April. Yeah, that was really good. So vulnerable. I, like I, <laughs> I feel like I'm good. I there was there's a I lot. Gotta, of I gotta stop the.